Hello everyone, I'm Zoe Chong, and as you can all imagine, I'm here to tell you all about economics. <laughs> well, sort of. It always surprises people when I tell them I want to be a stock market analyst, mainly because I'm known around the school for my art prowess. I mean, it's weird. How is it that I own six different sketchbooks, but I want to get a job where creativity and fun just seem to die? <laughs> I think that's what makes the prospect of economics so interesting to me. Not that I want to kill my creativity. You see, I lie at opposite ends of the spectrum of interest. One where I can express my emotions and my imagination, and the other where I can tell you all about how the recession in one country affects the rest of the world. Trust me, I have a perfectly valid reason why I seem to be all sorts of messed up. I've always been an artistic person. I love to act, to dance, to sing. Not that I'm even remotely good at any one of those things. And even after 12 years of piano lessons, I can even play Bach and Mozart. But my true talent resides in art. I've always been drawing. And I think it's because I have a very artistic family, but they each express their talents in completely different ways. Like my mom, she has the best concept of artistic pieces. My brother Garrett likes more cartoony and depressing things. And my other brother Min, he likes more video game inspired art, which can more or less also be really dark and depressing. Being surrounded by so many diverse and openly artistic people rubbed off on me to try drawing as well, mainly because art supplies were always plentiful. My family always fostered creative ways of thinking, so I took the ability and I ran with it. And I've, since then, always taken art as a school elective, and I've participated in a number of art competitions, some of which I've actually been pretty successful in. Drawing is second nature to me, as my teachers can vouch for considering my years of doodles decorating all of my papers. It's what calms me when I'm anxious, and it picks me up when I'm down. I love to see my t-shirt design on hundreds of people during homecoming or cancer awareness football games. And I love to see my art sent out as the school's holiday card. I love to see the class banner hung up in the sack every year during Spirit Week. But you all know that. What you don't know is why I would ever choose to study people's choices and their impact on the economy. Well, you can thank my dad for that. If Cupertino is the temple of the apple cult, then my house is the embodiment of a shrine to all of its products. <laughs> My dad, self-proclaimed Steve Jobs enthusiast, felt that no, it was not enough to own every Apple stock, every Apple product ever made, like iMacs and iPhones and iPods. He had to own the Apple stocks as well. So it was inevitable that I got pulled into the realm of the almighty Apple. So like millions of other people in this world, my parents dabbled in the stock market. And I would sit in the kitchen every summer with my mom, watching ticker symbols scrolling across the bottom of the business news channel. In the beginning, it didn't really make much sense to me when I watched the stock market shows, why everyone seemed so angry all the time, or why everyone on the market floor kind of looked like sheep being herded. But that didn't really matter to me, because I was only there to watch the Apple stock and how much they gained and lost every day. But as the year went on, my curiosity developed into something deeper. And it all started because of the Great Recession and the stock market crash in 2008, and my parents' stock portfolio tumbled to half of its worth. I remember seeing the worry etched on their faces. People were losing their jobs and defaulting on their housing loans, and I just kind of wanted to understand how all of this could have happened. So I started watching the news, and I saw how banks were being foreclosed and car corporations were being shut down. Names like Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, and Lehman Brothers invaded the news reports daily, along with terms like too big to fail and government bailouts. I found myself Googling more information to try to understand the severity of the situation. And then, as the crisis lessened, I saw how the government intervened, namely the Fed, by enacting monetary policies, like lending money to corporations to save them from going bankrupt, and lowering interest rates to historically low numbers. I wanted to understand the mechanics of our economy, and I started learning about how the United States Federal Reserve impacts our economy. And then when Janet Yellen became Federal Reserve Chairman, it pretty much changed my world. It made me see how women were capable of being in such high and powerful positions that were once only reserved for men. So 
it was pretty important to me that I study more about economics and finance and the impact of the economy on our stock market. In fact, the summer before my senior year, I participated in a mock stock market competition with the, with the Chindle School of Management at the University of Texas at Dallas. I was given a million virtual dollars and I used a real investment, um, real time investment program to track and trade every stock on the market. As part of the competition, there was an education portion where I would learn numerous financial and investment theories on top of my daily trading escapades. And I was actually really successful in the competition. I ended up placing in the top 20 of over 150 participants for the value of my stock portfolio. It was pretty awesome. I learned all sorts of different financial and economic concepts that even my parents didn't know. Suddenly, I was the one teaching them about put and call options, the different chapters of bankruptcy, and IRAs. It was pretty invigorating to see my progress, going from knowing nothing about Wall Street to being the most well-informed person in the household. If it wasn't clear before, I knew now that economics and finance were things that I would just love to study. All of my experiences and my inspirations are stepping stones to my goal. They define me as a student, and they set me apart from other people who share my dream. I think it's important to realize that just because you've been acting since you were five, or you've committed to the fact that, yes, someday you're going to be a doctor, that you don't look around and see other talents that just seem so natural to you, and some other opportunities that in your life that could possibly be your calling. When I was 12, I couldn't imagine being anything except for an artist, but now, I see myself in New York. Analyst by day, artist by night. Thank you.